welcome to another lesson. So today we're actually continuing from yesterday's lesson that we're, we looked at organic compounds, right? So now we're going to look at reaction of organic compounds. So since we know how to write formulas and name these compounds, let's look at how they react under specific conditions, all right? So again, we're going to start off with alkenes, right? So alkenes, they burn in air, Right? So they burn with the presence of oxygen to give carbon dioxide and water. Right? So we notice we balance the equation there. So that's a simple reaction of all alkenes. Right? So alkenes as well react with halogens. Right? And we know halogens are group 17 elements like chlorine, bromine, iodine. Right? So they react with halogens in the presence of UV light. Now the purpose of the UV light is to ensure that the, these halogens molecules are broken down, right? Because the halogens exist as gases, right? So example, we have chlorine exist as Cl2. So in order for it to react with alkene, it has to be just Cl atom being reacting with the, the alkene, right? So the purpose of the UV light is to ensure that we split this molecule so we get chlorine and chlorine, right? So after the reaction is finished, we get the methyl chloride and hydrogen chloride, right? So this is a, the hydrogen chloride gas, so this is not hydrochloric acid. So it's hydrogen chloride gas and methyl chloride. So we get the name, remember CH3 is methyl and then Cl is chloride. So we get the name hydrogen, methyl chloride, right? So this type of reaction is called a substitution reaction. Right? And it's substitution because we're removing a H from the methane to give place for the, the chlorine. Right? So that is substituting. Right? So chlorine is substituting for one of the, the H from the alkene. All right? Then we move to alkenes. So the breaking of large alkenes by catalyst or heat is called cracking. Right? So we have alkenes that have a lot of carbons. Right? So once it has a long carbon chain, right, then we can break it up into smaller ones and they produce alkenes from this, right? So when we break those bonds, right, to make it smaller, it becomes alkenes, right? And this process is called cracking. So we have two types of cracking. It's either it's thermal cracking or catalytic cracking. And thermal means we apply heat to it to break the bonds and catalytic means that we use a catalyst to actually break the bonds in those alkenes, all right? And we look at another reaction of alkenes, which are the addition reaction. And the first one is the hydrogenation, right? So addition means we're going to take something and put it there, right? So remember alkenes have double bond. So we can break that double bond. So we free now to have add things to it. So that's why it's called an addition reaction. So hydrogenation specifically means that we're using hydrogen to add to the alkenes, right? So under this condition, we need a temperature of about 200 degrees Celsius, and we need a catalyst of either platinum or nickel, right? So let's look at our ethene, right? C2H4, ethene. So if we know the structure of ethene, right, we have this. So that's ethene. So the process of the heat as well as the catalyst is to actually break the double bond. So we have a single bond. So that means we have one carbon that's free to bond with something and one carbon that's free to bond with something, right? So because it's hydrogenation, the hydrogen is H2. We have two hydrogen atoms, right? The it's going to one will go with this one, one will go with that one. And now we look at that, it gives us an alkane, right? Because it's a single bond. So it gives us the respective alkane. So an ethene reaction with hydrogen will give us an ethane, right? So that's the process of hydrogenation in alkenes. And then we look at hydration. Now hydration now is water, right? So hydration of alkenes, right? To make alcohols. So hydrogenation creates alkenes, Hydration creates alcohols, right? So we have ethene again, which reacts with water, right? And it gives us 
C2H5OH, which is ethanol, right? So, so that's the process. So let's look at the structure, how that works out, right? So we know this is ethene, right? So that's ethene. So we need a condition of 300 degrees Celsius, 60 atmospheric pressure, and we need a catalyst of phosphoric acid. So we need an acid present for the breaking of the bond as well as the heat and the high, temp high pressure, right? So these processes would cause water to split as well as the double bond here to split. So it gives this carbon and this carbon free space for the bonding, right? So when water splits, it splits into a, a H and a OH, right? So that's where we get our alcohol. So the H fills out one carbon and the OH fills out the other carbon. And remember, once it has OH on a organic compound, then it's, that is a, an alcohol, all right? Now this process is, you notice the arrow is back, back and forth, right? So that's a reversible reaction. So we can actually bond an alkene and water to give us an alcohol, but we also can actually get water and the alkene from the alcohol by reversing what we did the first time, right? So that's why we have the double arrow to show that's a reversible reaction, right? Now the halogenation, which is reaction with halogens, that's the process, right? It's actually used to distinguish if a compound is unsaturated, right? And unsaturated means it has a double or triple bond. Okay, so remember unsaturated would mean that it doesn't have the maximum number of hydrogen bonds that it should, right? So it has space for more things to be added to it. So it has more than a, a single bond, double bond, triple bond, right? So use of the halogen test, halogenation test is actually used specifically to distinguish if something is saturated or unsaturated. So with alkenes, right, if we react bromine or chlorine, right, to it, it's going to actually change the color. And the reason for that is because the breaking of the bond, right, for you to add, add the bromine or the chlorine, right, will give you that discoloration of the chlorine or bromine. But for alkane, right, we notice we did not break a double bond to get our chlorine added. So because there's no double bond created, then the compound, the bromine or chlorine, will not change its color, right? So that's how we know. So if we add bromine to an uh, unknown substance and it actually gets discolored, then we know that it is actually an unsaturated compound. If it doesn't get discolored, then that means it is a saturated compound, all right? So if we look at out the ethene, we're active with bromine, right? We get ethyl bromide, right? So this ethyl bromide will, will get a discolored co um, color, right? While the methyl chloride will not get a discolored basis, right? Now with ethene, as with alkenes as well, we talk about polymers, right? And polymers are complex long compounds that are made from a simpler ones, right? These simpler ones are called monomers. So it's just like protein, right? Because protein is a polymer. So we know that proteins are made, are made up of amino acids, right? So amino acids, continuous bonding of amino acids gives us the compound of protein, right? So it's the same thing for polymers. So we have basically alkenes can actually bond with themselves to actually give us those long chains called monomers, right? Those long chains called polymers, sorry. So examples of polymers, we have like PVC, that's used for piping purposes. So your pipes normally have PVC on it, polyphenyl chloride, right? We have Teflon, which is a cork, right? Nylon string as well. So those things are actually polymers because they use smaller, smaller unsaturated compounds to actually break those, those bonds to create, to, for them to add each time, making it bigger and stronger as they go by. All right, so let's look at the reaction of alcohols now. All right, so the reaction of alcohols. So alcohols react 
in combustion manner, right? So just like alkanes, right? So alcohol combusts, so it reacts with carb with oxygen, sorry, to give carbon dioxide water, and it gives us energy as well. So this E represents energy, all right? So, so that's combustion of alcohols. Oxidation, right? So notice this is given oxygen, but it's heat, right? So you need heat as well. But with this oxidation, the oxide is given by using either potassium permanganate or potassium dichromate 6, right? So we have that compound there, which is a very good oxidizing agent to reduce the alcohol to give us the carboxylic acid equivalent, right? So if we have ethanol, ethanol here, so it's Z2, so it's ethanol, then the acid, carboxylic acid will give is ethanoic acid, right? So the so we get ethanoic acid, right? So if we as if we had used methanol, then we get methanoic acid, right? So reacting the alcohol with the oxidizing agent of potassium dichromate six or potassium permanganate, we get the equivalent acid as well as water, right? So that is the reactions for alcohol that is very important at this level right and then we look at our carboxylic acids right so because it's an acid it does actually do the neutralization reaction so it reacts with a base to give you salt and water right so if we have ethanoic acid reacting with sodium hydroxide we get sodium ethanoate right and water right so even though the sodium is at the back it's still the metal part first, right? And then the ethanoid. Alright, so that's the name of the salt that is produced. And we always get water from our neutralization reaction, right? So the important part is, right, to get this, we take off the H from the acid, right? As previous before we do, right? And it bonds with the OH from the from the base, right? So we get that reaction. So H and OH bonds to give you water. So whatever is there, CH3COO plus the Na reacts to give you the, the salt, right? So remember the metal comes first in the name, right? But in the structure, it comes where the H was left off, which is at the, the end, all right? And then the final reaction that we're going to look at is known as esterification. Now, esterification, right, is the formation of esters by reacting acids with alcohol, right? Now, uh, esterification that is important is called saponification, right? So, saponification is, is the reaction of ethanoic acid and ethanol, right? So ethanoic acid ethanol gives you the process called saponification, which is a process that's used to make soap, right? So the soap that you use for your daily activity, right? It's made from this process of esterification, which is saponification, right? So in this, we have the ethanoic acid and the alcohol, the ethanol, sorry, in the presence of a concentrated sulfuric acid. Right? So we need that as a catalyst, the concentrated sulfuric acid, to give us the, the ester. So the ester, right? if you notice the structure here, is we have the acid first. Right? So this part is your acid part. right? So that's the acid, then it's the, the alcohol. So in the structure formation, the acid comes before the, the alcohol, right? because this H was removed and this OH was removed. Right, so the where the H was, we put the C2H5, so that's our structure, right? But in the naming of your compound, we name the alcohol part first, then our acid part. So in this case, we get ethyl from ethanol, right? Because C2H5 is ethyl, remember those from yesterday's class, right? And then CH3COO is, remember this was ethanoic acid, right? So instead of ic, we put eight, right? Because this is ester, esters, right? So esters ends with eight, 
So it's ethanoate because it was using ethanoic acid, right? So that's how you name the structure. So the, the structure of that, if we draw it, would be C, we put three H's here, right? It's bond to another C, which has a double bond to an O, and then this O, right? So this O was, would normally bond to the H here, right, for the acid. But now because it's removed, right, it's going to actually bond with this C, right, that has two H's on it, and another C, right, that has the H, H, and H, right? So we have the C2H5 there, and we have the C2H3O2, right? So this is your structure of the ester, but in naming the ester, we use the last part first, which is ethyl, because it's two Cs, right? And this two ethanoic acid, so it's ethanoate. So ethyl ethanoate, right? So that's it, guys. So I, I hope you understand and learn something about the reaction of organic acids today. And see you guys next time.